Number one, are you ready? Are you ready? Our representatives are not in the government. They're going to keep on killing us. I swear to God they're going to keep on killing us. They're going to wipe us out. Jesus! to stop the gangs and the violence and to stop the drugs from pouring into our communities. There is nobody in this country who got rich on his own. Nobody. It's always the brown man or the black man or the poor man that does the dirty work. We are the janitors of the world. In 2018, the Pew Research Center reported that the Latino population reached a total of 59.9 million. However, the overall population growth among Latinos has slowed over the past decade as immigration from Mexico has declined. The southern region of the U.S. has the fastest growing Latino population, and Los Angeles County reported the highest population as of 2018, with over 4,920,000 followed by Harris County in Houston, Texas, boasting a Latino population of 2,040,000, totaling 43% of the population in the county. Despite the decreasing growth of the Latino population, tensions in the nation regarding immigration, race, and the contribution of Latinos in the United States remains a heavily debated topic in American politics, the economy, and in the everyday lives of Americans. In 2017, the Pew Research Center reported that unauthorized immigrants from Mexico represent 47% of the estimated 10.5 million undocumented population, reaching less than half of the total population of undocumented immigrants for the first time in almost two decades. Central Americans represent 1.9 million of the population, and 1.45 million are from Asia. Interestingly, 62% of the unauthorized immigrant population overstayed their visas after arriving to the U.S. legally, while 38% arrived to the U.S. by crossing the border illegally. One of Trump's infamous campaign slogans and decision to press for funding for a wall in the U.S.-Mexico border has remained a significant but divisive topic in federal policy and international relations. Prior to the Trump administration's stance on the border wall and immigration law, 2.5 million unauthorized immigrants were deported under the Obama administration averaging at least 8,000 deportations per day and spending a whopping 18 billion U.S. dollars on immigration enforcement. Ahead of Pathway to Citizenship. We have done more on border security in the last four years than we had done in the previous 20. We've seen a drop in terms of illegal crossings of about 80 percent since 2000. We have made enormous strides, put resources in. We've actually done almost everything that Republicans asked to be done several years ago as a condition to move forward on comprehensive immigration reform. It is important to note that anti-immigrant and anti-Latino sentiments are not new to the U.S. government or to the American people. Activism within and outside the Latino population has paved way for the inclusion and allocation of programs for Latinos and minorities in the U.S ranging from the Chicano protests in the 70s to the integration of ESL programs in the public school system protected under the 14th Amendment, and recently to the integration of the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, or DACA. However, major setbacks to immigration reform have led to tensions and protests aiming for the protection of undocumented immigrants and those fearing deportation under the Trump administration. Central to these issues are individuals like Gerardo, Andrea, Lázaro, and Lázaro's nephew, three Latinos of diverse histories and backgrounds living in Harris County. In 1986, President Ronald Reagan granted amnesty to three million undocumented immigrants living in the U.S. Gerardo, a father, husband, and business owner, was one of the recipients. His eldest two daughters are now in college, each working towards a career in the medical field and in immigration law, correspondingly. Sí, soy Gerardo y 
Llegué aquí a los 16 años, nací en Guanajuato, Dolores Hidalgo, Guanajuato, México, y me hice ciudadano hasta los 33 años de edad, y estoy casado y tengo seis hijos. Me vine caminando, crucé el río y ya me andaba llevando el río. <risa> Pero gracias a Dios no, y luego llegué a trabajar allí a Sinton, Texas, en un restaurante como un mes. Allí eh, no me pagaron porque fue el, el ray que me dieron de, la, de George West uh -huh. a Sinton, Texas. Uh -huh. Y allí fue por, uno, por el ray que me dieron y este y por eso no no me pagaron ese mes no, pues de aquí a de, desde el 79 estuve son documentos hasta el el 86 80 y arreglé el 80 y el 87 me dieron el primer permiso ahí en maryland cuántos años tenía de ahí tenía yo creo que algunos 24 años cuando me dieron el permiso, 24, 25 años y de ahí pues me dieron el permiso y, y allí pues gracias a Dios porque me sentí muy libremente, dije yo ahora sí, soy libre aquí de, de andar aquí, más a gusto y, y es un país de muchas oportunidades y este, por eso fue que ya me dediqué a abrir mi propio negocio, nomás que pues no, no lo crecí mucho, siempre he estado nada más trabajando un poco, no, no, no mucho. Sí, este, tiene uno que echarle muchas ganas y, y más que nada ten, tener fe en Dios y Dios le ayuda y de esa manera recibe muchas bendiciones y este, y de allí pues hay que echarle ganas y hay que estar todo el tiempo este, al 100 y para todo hay que, hay que darse tiempo y no consumir cerveza, alcohol o drogas y para que la mente esté todo el tiempo bien y es todo ¿no? Andrea is the eldest of her family and a recent graduate pursuing a career in education her experiences as a child and as a first-generation college graduate and DACA recipient have encouraged her to continue her path in bilingual education. She graduated with honors from her university and she plans to receive a master's in the future. This is my favorite, amigo. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, no, not the public. They have a great one. Hello, my name is Andrea. I am 23 years old and I recently graduated from the University of Houston downtown. I have a bachelor's degree in education. That means I can teach all the way from, from pre-K all the way to sixth grade. When I came to the United States, um, I was seven years old. I actually came to the United States um, a day before my birthday. So I remember it was right when I turned seven years old that I was here. So when I was young, um, not being a DACA recipient was never <laughs> something that was in my head. Uh, growing up, I was just like any other normal kid. I was, I wasn't thinking of things like a, having a job or what I was gonna do in school yet. And pretty much my life was just normal. And it wasn't until I reached the age that I had to get a job, and then I, ha I started thinking about my future that um, all of that started to sink in. And I had to pay my own tuition just because I wouldn't get financial aid. I wouldn't get FAFSA. And it was hard because I would have to go to school, a full-time student, I took like four classes, five classes. And then on top of that, I had to work. We got out like at 11 sometimes, we had to clean. And it was just exhausting. In a way, I'm really grateful to have DACA because it granted me the opportunity to reach the career that I want, which is teaching. And if I weren't able to do that, then I don't really know what else I will be doing in my life because I really enjoy kids and I feel that the major that I chose is a place where you can teach kids um, to appreciate their life and I have, I'm certified uh, bilingual so the kids that I do teach, their kids that are just like me, it makes me feel really like powerful because I'm like I can do pretty much anything with having 
other people tell me that I can, I pretty much can. So after you feel that way, there's nothing really that can stop you. Mm -hmm. And I try to think about it like really optimistic because I try to think like, oh, I'm like one day uh, people that are just like me are going to be able to feel the same way because I know sometimes uh, kids like me, they feel like really like sad and they just feel like they their dreams can get cut down like easily and they can but I don't like thinking about it because I'm thinking we already got this far like we already did so many other things and we can we have to keep going is there anything that you want to any message you would like to say I would want them to be a little more human and think that we're just like them we have the same dreams we have the same aspirations we wake, we, I wake up every day thinking of where I'm gonna go my job, my career, who I'm gonna impact. I don't wake up and think I'm gonna do something bad today. Like that's not one, <laughs> that's not my thing. Like, and I would just want them to be a little bit more human and have a little more compassion. I guess sometimes I just feel like people they don't think like a normal people should think. They just think of they just wanna make others feel like they can do the same thing because we're not the same. But we are the same. We have rights. <laughs> like we can do anything. But it feels to me it feels sad and mostly because we hold we hold our family together and they got us there. So we do it for our family. Mm -hmm. We wanna be great because they want us to be great. Not necessarily because we have struggled like them, but because we're doing it for them. That's how I feel. Lazaro arrived to the U.S. recently, as violence and poverty have become more prevalent in his home country of Guatemala. He has worked to provide for his family ever since, working anywhere from 14 to 23 hours per day to afford his living expenses and to put his children through school. My name is Lázaro Lobos. I have 34 years old. I've been living here in the United States for 7 years. ¿Cuántos hijos tienes? Tengo dos hijos. ¿Y de dónde vienes? Yo vengo de, de la ciudad de Guatemala. Yo soy una familia muy baja, que tenemos un, menos economía y pues quiero sacar adelante y que sea la pobreza que, que se termina en la generación donde estoy y a mis hijos que sea prosperado. Mm -hmm. La escuela nos queda una hora a pie caminando, no hay, no hay carro ni no nada de eso, pues no tuve muy lejos y aparte de eso pues yo soy el mayor de todos mis hermanos y tiene que cuidar a mis hermanos, nosotros por todos somos once y entonces si soy el mayor, pues el mayor se encarga de cuidar a los hermanos, entonces no tuve la oportunidad porque si voy a ir a la escuela tiene que cuidar a ellos y ayudar a mi papá Entonces nos dio abasto y no tenemos dinero para comprar los útiles y por eso no estudié. Y solamente vengo por una necesidad temporalmente, pues, en que nos mira con una cara muy, muy diferente, pero hay que dejarlo pasarla, porque si uno se compara con el otro, pues uno no gana nada, lo que sale perdiendo es uno. Entonces lo que uno va a hacer es aguantarla. Por ahora pues estoy trabajando 14 horas, ya el año que, que estamos ahorita empecé a trabajar 14 horas a 15 horas, ¿Al pero día? al día, un año. Hace 6 años atrás he trabajado 23 horas al día y para sacar adelante a, a lo que me meta, que lo que estoy haciendo para ellos es mandar dinero y corregirla y y decirle que se vayan a la escuela y hacer sus deberes para, para que más en adelante que sean grandes. Porque se siente gacho que uno no sabe leer ni escribir. Esa es mi meta, que, que ellos que sean prosperados. Cabe decir hace rato cuando uno no sabe leer ni escribir. Y peor aquí en este país que ya es otro idioma, pues he batallado mucho. He batallado mucho porque yo tengo un lenguaje que no es castellano ni español y más o menos en inglés no sé nada, pero gracias a Dios que he puesto mi parte, he luchado a aprender a los dos idiomas y ahorita pues estoy más o menos a entender más español y también 
aprendiendo un poquito de inglés y para sobrevivir y también sacar adelante a mi familia y yo también aquí. Lázaro's nephew arrived to the U.S. less than a year ago and has worked in the food industry to afford his living expenses and to pay off his debts to the coyotes. Although he is only 17, he has endured and worked endlessly to support himself and to send money to his family. In his free time, he keeps to himself and plays with model cars during his break. ¿Y cuánto tiempo tiene aquí en Estados Unidos? Acá se va cumpliendo el año. ¿El año? Ajá. ¿Y cuántas horas trabaja él? Ah, él trabaja ahorita, aproximadamente trabaja 13 horas al día, los 6 días a la semana. Trabajo. Él se arriesgó de venir, pero no solo se arriesgó de venir, sino que también uno se mete a una deuda uh -huh. Pagó una cantidad de 14 mil dólares a llegar acá. Hay un mensaje que tú le quieres dar como a otras personas como tú, otros latinos, otros hispanos, una persona que está en la misma posición que tú. Sí. Nunca se desconfía ni a usted mismo de lo que llevo por dentro y aquí el entendimiento. Eso es lo que les digo, échenle ganas. No se espera en cualquier cosa, hay que echarle ganas. No fácil dejar la familia, decir un adiós o un abrazo, hasta pronto o hasta nunca. Porque en el camino nunca sabemos vivir o morir, ver de nuevo o ya no morir de nuevo. Dar un abrazo será el último o va a haber otra vez. Nunca es fácil decir adiós a un ser querido, pero nada es difícil y nada es imposible para Dios. Todo es posible. Que Dios les bendiga. Hay que echarle ganas. Las miradas enfrente y no las miradas atrás. Pasos enfrente y no pasos atrás. Esas son mis palabras a ustedes, ser queridos.